Welcome back to the King's Corner, the place for all things Bethesda. I am the King Fan Man with a Fallout 76 news update. A new Inside the Vault came out today, and there's not much in it, but what is in it you're going to really love. It is all about the camp building. Well, there's more in it about the PvP, but what I'm interested in is about the camp building. I'll talk about the PvP in just a minute. There are two separate things in regard to the camps that are talked about in the Inside the Vault. The first one has been asked for quite a lot in the circles that I run in, and it's called the Camp Damage Protection in the Adventure Mode. And again, this has been asked for a lot, and I say thank you, thank you, Bethesda Game Studios. What this is, it gives our camps protection from other players, basically from griefers, from destroying our camps. And I'm just going to read you what it says in the Inside the Vault. When we originally launched the Survival Beta with Patch 7.5 last month, we made an Adventure Mode change to prevent you from taking attack damage from players that you are not hostile against, aka slap damage. In other words, now you, you, when you shoot another player, you don't take any damage at all. Okay. So, at that time, we had also mentioned that we were planning to bring similar damage protections to Adventure, adventure Mode players' camps in the future. Will this change that will prevent other players' attacks from dealing damage to objects and structures you've built in your camp so long as you and your tours are not hostile against those players? We are excited to let you know that we are currently planning to roll this out with Patch 9 in early May. Super, super exciting because I've been seeing this way too often that griefers are destroying other people's camps. Now, uh, this is just a plea to people out there. If you want to do that kind of stuff, go over to survival mode. If you want to be a griefer, there is a whole mode for that. And I am so pleased to see Bethesda changing, making these changes to adventure mode to make it more like it should be in adventure mode. There's one more change that needs to be made and I want you to send this in. It is the change in workshop to change it back the way it was uh, to where you cannot challenge a workshop from anywhere. That has made griefing in workshops so terrible. So let's all ask Bethesda to change the workshops now back to the way it was. But for now, this is a great change to the camp, the camp damage protection. This is so, so good so that our camps will be protected while we're away or while we're in it for that matter. As I said, I've seen too many camps destroyed by griefers. Okay, the second one, and this is a very cool adjustment. It is the called the foundational camp adjustment. And this makes me want to rebuild my whole camp. It makes, uh, I'm going to explain it to you before I read it. Uh, the first piece that you put down in the camp has to be on solid ground, but that's the only one that has to be on solid ground. Then anything else you put doesn't have to be on solid ground. Like uh, right now, before this patch goes down, every foundation piece has to be on solid ground. But after this new patch comes, only the first piece does. That is, that, that just frees it up. You can go out over the river, you can go out over the air, so it makes all kinds of possibilities open. Let me read it to you. With patch nine, we're also planning to make it easier to construct your camp by removing the requirement that all of the structure's foundation must be placed on terrain. Once this is implemented, only the first foundation piece you place will need to be built on terrain. All subsequent foundations you snap to that original piece will then ignore this rule. That is so huge. While this chain doesn't apply to workshops, it should help you build more freely in your camp and will make it easier to place or relocate large camp structures. And that is something, not only will it help you build new ones, it will help you relocate. You see, you don't have to have every piece covering. Now you can put your old house somewhere else because there may be part of that old uh, house that's not down on the ground now it won't matter as you see so what a great change both of these changes are excellent excellent i love to see bethesda listening to us and these are so wanted changes and i know that they are listening these are changes that many people have sent in and i'm so glad 
that they've made these changes. Great job. Okay, as I promised now, the PvP mode. Uh, most of the inside of the vault is on the PvP mode. Uh, what is coming up is called Challenge and Rewards for the PvP mode. It says each week in survival mode, you can claim a different legendary reward by completing weekly challenges. You know how they have the weekly challenges to get the atoms? Well, these weekly challenges are to get legendary weapons, and it is spelled out in the inside the vault. And by the way, just like every one of these that I do on the inside of the vault, there will be a link in the description with the inside the vault so that you can look these up. But I'm going to give you just a, a few of these so that you know what it's talking about. Uh, it says we're continuing to add new challenges and rewards on a regular basis. And we'd like to give you a sneak peek at the next six legendary weapons that will be up for grabs over the coming week. So I'm going to go over them. Again, I'm going to leave a link to this in the description so that you can go back over it later. Don't worry, I'm going to do these very quickly. May the 7th through the 13th, the prize is the Resolute Veteran. And you see the weapon there. And the, uh, the way you get it is, the objectives is, you have to claim a workshop, you have to build a turret, a trap, or a defensive structure in a workshop or camp, and you have to kill a human-like creature. And there is your reward. You get the Resolute Veteran, and you see what it does there on the screen. May the 14th through the 20th, weapon is the commander's charge. The ob objectives is to claim a workshop while on a team, complete a quest while on a team, kill a scorch beast while on a team, and revive a player while on a team. And you see the uh, benefits of the weapon. 40% swing, uh, faster swing, damage increased after each consecutive swing, and plus one agility. May the 21st through the 22nd, you have Nightlight. Oh, very pretty weapon there. Objectives are to kill a firefly, kill an enemy with an energy weapon, take a camera picture in stormy weather, build a light in a workshop or camp, and the reward is the night light. The damage increase at night and decreases during the day, 25% faster rate of fire, and plus one on perception. Week 10, May 28th through June Third, you have the King Fisher. I wish they would add fishing. Oh, I would love fishing in Fallout 76. That would be great, but I digress. The objects are to kill an aquatic or semi-aquatic creature. Uh, Meyer lurks, King Meyer lurks, those. Cook a meal using meat from an aquatic creature. Claim the workshop lakeside cabins and complete a quest or an event in the Cranberry Bog. And then you see the effects of the King Fisher plus 30 damage to Meyer Lurks and Bugs, Vats critical shots do plus 50 damage, and your Vats critical meter fills 15% faster. And then you have the unstoppable monster you're fighting for. Objectives are cook a meal while intoxicated, eat raw meat, kill a critter while starving, kill a human-like creature with a melee weapon, claim a workshop while mutated. And you get the weapon that does more damage the lower your health is, it's a 40% more power attack damage and takes 40% less damage while power attacking. And then June the 11th through the 17th, it is the Salt of the Earth shotgun. And the objectives are to plant a crop in your camp or workshop, harvest a wild plant or fungus, milk a Brahmin successfully, kill a creature with a farm tool, and claim a workshop at Billings Homestead and the salt of the earth shoots an additional uh, projectile. It has plus 10% damage while aiming and 15% faster reload time. Remember, those are just like the challenges we have uh, on the Atomic Shop challenges. Just like you have the challenges to get the atoms, these are the same type challenges as well, but they are to get legendary weapons. Sadly, again, though, the only way that you can get those is on PvP mode. So it is on the survival mode only. Now, there are a few more changes on survival mode. Let me go over them. Uh, they say they significantly reduce the amount of aid items that players drop when they die, as well as the number of caps that trade hands when players kill each other. 
We also switched the primary scoreboard stat from the longest life to player kills, meaning the top three players are now highlighted on other players' maps based on the number of dwellers they've dropped rather than how long they've managed to stay alive. We believe these have been positive changes for the survival beta overall, and we'd like to thank everyone who has shared their thoughts on the new mode with us so far. Now, they've also given some scoreboard updates. It says, as mentioned above, we recently changed the primary scoreboard stat in survival from the longest life to player kills. We had been planning to change up the primary stat regularly by rotating through all our current survival stats, such as XP gain and enemies killed, so that we can evaluate your feedback on each and keep the scoreboard feeling fresh. However, we'd like to hear directly from you. Let us know which survival stat you prefer most by voting in our poll in the Fallout 76 forums on Bethesda.net. And I wanted to end with that anyway. Please always give your feedback on anything. If you're involved in the PvP mode, please go to that poll and vote. But if you're not, if you're just playing in adventure mode, go and give them your feedback. What we've talked about today, give them your feedback on the workshop, what I was telling you. Ask them to change it back to the way it was before people could challenge it from anywhere. That will help take away the griefing in the workshops. Just, just a little tip from the King Fan Man. Let's ask Bethesda to get griefing totally out of the adventure mode. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this condensed version of the Fallout 76 news, but wasn't it great? I love the changes in the camps that Bethesda has brought us. Wonderful changes. So, again, I hope you enjoy this Fallout 76 news update. Be sure to check all my links down below. Check my Patreon. Please think about becoming a partner with the King Fan Man if it is all possible. And again, as always, if you would like to play Fallout 76 with me, just send me a message. I would love to. I've got several that I'm trying to line up right now to get with as soon as I can get back to my Xbox and my PS4. And y'all know who you are. I am the King Fan Man. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Thank you.